The question here says it is 38.734 plus 8.638 minus 5.19 is equal to what? So very basic question which involves addition and subtraction. These are the two operations. Right? And the given options here are 41.971. Second option is 42.179. The third option here is 43.072. Fourth one is 42.182. And the fifth option is none of these. Right? So a simple question on simplifications with the five options given to you. Let's look at the solution for this question. Now how do we generally solve this? Right? Going by the traditional method, you will have to write the numbers one upon the other and then add them using the uh, basic conventional addition and subtraction method. Right? So let's follow the traditional method first, see what is the answer and then we will follow uh, the smart way of getting the answer which doesn't require you to write uh, too much on paper. Right? So let's first look at the traditional conventional way of getting the answer. What do we do? 38.734 then we say the next number here is 8.638 and you know that when you are writing the numbers one upon the other you have to you know write them properly the all the unit spaces have to come in one straight line all the 10 spaces have to come in straight line right or here in this case we'll have to balance the uh, decimal point here so it's 8.638 so we properly write it as 8.638 minus 5.19 minus 5.19 this has to be simplified, right? So if you look at it, all the decimal points are uh, in sync with each other, right? So 38 and this second number, 38.734 and 8.638 has to be added from which we we'll subtract 5.19. So there are various ways of doing it. Either you can add the two numbers first and then subtract 5.19 or you can subtract 5.19 from 8.638 and then add the result to 38 or you can do 5, I mean you can do uh, subtract 5 from 38.734 and then add it to get the required answer. Any way you follow, final answer is going to be the same, right? Here we'll directly try to add and subtract at the same time. Now, as per the Bodmas rule, you know that addition comes first and then followed by subtraction. But just remember, when you are doing additions and subtractions, you need not strictly follow the rule because subtraction is also one kind of addition. Are you able to follow? As per the rule, the Bodmas rule, we know that we always have to do additions first, then followed by subtraction. But remember friends, here addition and subtraction actually is one set of operations. Additions and subtractions. You can do any one of them depending on your convenience. And why does uh, the rule does not uh, get violated when you are subtracting first? Because subtraction is also a type of addition. For example, we say that 4 plus 2 is equal to 6. What is 4 minus 2? 4 minus 2 can also be taken as 4 plus of minus 2. Instead of saying that I am subtracting 2 from 4, we can say that I am adding minus 2 to 4. So in one way, subtraction is also a kind of addition. And 4 plus of minus 2 will be equal to what? 2. So, you know, considering that point here, addition or subtraction doesn't really uh, matter when you follow the bottom of 2. So let's look at the solution here. Now, what do we do? We always go from right to left. So 4 plus 8, remember this is plus and next one is minus. So 4 plus 8, 12. And here we do not have anything, right? 0. So 4 plus 8 plus 4 plus 8, 12. 12 minus 0 is 12. So we take 2 in the answer and 1 gets carried forward. Then go to the next step. 1 plus 3, 4. 4 plus 3, 7. 7 minus 9. Be careful. 1 plus 3 is 4. 1 is the carry there. 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 minus 9. 7 minus 9 is not possible. So what do we do? We borrow 1 from the next place, right? This is 10th place. We borrow 1 from the next place, right? So that means let's take 1 from 7. So this 7 becomes 6 and this 1 becomes 11. Are you able to follow? I, I am sure all of you are aware of uh, this logic here. So 11, are you able to follow? Sorry, we can say it becomes 13 or 11, doesn't matter. There. Generally, we take it to this place. So we borrow 1 from 7 and make it 13. Now 1 plus 13 is 14. 14 plus 3 is 17. 17 minus 9. What is 17 minus 9? 8. So we get 8 in the next position there. Now look at the next part. It's not 7 anymore. It is 6 because 1 has been given to the next position already. So 6 plus 6. 6 plus 6 12. 12 minus 1. 12 minus 1 is 11. So we take 1 in the answer and 1 gets carried forward. Right? That's the general rule that we follow with the decimal point now because 3 positions have been taken. Now come to the next unit space. 1 plus 8 9. 9 plus 8 
9 plus 8 is 17. 17 minus 5. What is 17 minus 5? 12. So we take 2 in the answer and 1 gets carried forward. And what is the last step? 1 with 3, 4. Here we do not have any 10 spaces. So your correct answer will be 42.182. Yes or no? The right answer for this question here is 42.182, which is option 4. 42.182. But does this really suit the competitive examination? No. How much time does it take? This method is not suggested. The method is correct. The answer is also correct. But you can't be doing, uh, you can't be finding out the answer in this way in the exam because time is very precious there, right? Even if these kind of simple calculations are done on paper, you end up wasting a lot of time, right? So it's all about trying to be quick, I mean, trying to be as quick as possible, right? So let's understand a smart way of getting an answer, right? There, we'll not write any of these steps. We'll not write any of the numbers uh, to get the required answer. The, the main problem by following this method here is method is correct, but it takes up a lot of time because there is a there's a lot of writing part. You have to write the numbers once again and then you have to do the uh, calculation. So that is the reason strongly do not follow this, right? Try to follow the smart way which I'm going to explain you now, right? So let's look at let's look at the smart way of getting an answer. Let me just clear this part here. Smart way of getting an answer. Now what do we do in this method here is instead of writing the numbers on paper and then doing the calculation directly try to add the places one by one. Generally, what do we do? We first add the tens places, sorry, units places. Then we go for tens places, then hundreds places and so on. Let's do the same thing without writing the numbers on paper. Now, because here we have got decimal numbers, we have to be a little careful. What do we do? First add all the rightmost digits, right? All the rightmost digits, right? Here in this number, the rightmost digit is four. Here it is eight and so on. But be careful. Remember here the numbers are all decimal numbers. These are not integers. These are not integers. These are all decimals, decimal numbers. So you have to be careful. The number of digits after the decimal have to be balanced. Here, how many digits do we have? Three. Here we have three. But in this number, we have got only two digits. So if you directly add all the rightmost digits, four plus eight, 12, 12 minus nine, you'll get a wrong answer. Because this nine is not the rightmost digit in this case. Understand? We have to balance it first. So what do we do? Just put a zero here. For convenience, just put a zero. Now it's all simple. Three digits after the decimal. Now you can put the calculation and verify what's the correct answer. So what do we do? 4 plus 8, 12. 12 minus 0. 12 minus 0 is what? 12. So we get 2 in the answer. 1 gets carried forward. Carried forward to the next piece. Yes or no? Now add 1 plus 3, 4. 4 plus 3. Are you able to follow? Already we have done the First digit calculation, 4 plus 8, 12 minus 0 is 12. We have got 2 in the answer. 1 has got carried as a next phase. Now, 1 plus 3, 4. 4 plus 3, 7. 7 minus 9. Again, the same trouble. 7 minus 9. It's not possible, right? We get a negative value there. So what do we do? Borrow 1 from the next phase. So in this number, let's say this is 6 and this becomes 13. Now, 1 plus 13 is 14. 14 plus 3, 17. 17 minus 9 is 8. We get 8 in the next phase. And remember friends, while following this procedure, the direct addition procedure, you have to eliminate the wrong answer options. And sometimes you may be directly able to get the right answer. Here, of course, in this case, the fifth option is none of this, but still we'll be able to eliminate the wrong answer options in the first second step itself. For example, I very well know that the answer should end with two. Look at the options. First option ends with one. Is it the possible answer? No. Ruled out. First option is ruled out. Second option ends with 9. Is this the possible answer? No. I very well know that the answer has to end with 2. So even this is ruled out. The third option ends with 2. Possible. Fourth option ends with 2. Possible. Fifth option, none of this. Maybe that is the correct answer. Right? But here, because fifth option is none of this, we may not be able to directly mark the answer. But let's say if the fifth option also is some number given to us, which is not ending in 2, that gets eliminated. Right? So if you try to adapt to this elimination procedure, Without doing the complete calculation, you may be able to mark the answer sometimes, right? So be careful. I mean, you should make this a habit that, you know, don't complete the simplification. Just keep looking at the options and see if some elimination is possible or not. Then after looking at two, if you go to eight, we know that the tens place has to, I mean, not the tens place, the second digit has to be eight from right side. Already first and second options are ruled out. Now if you look at third option, 43.072, we have seven here, but we very well know that the answer should be ending it, I mean, it should be 8 in that case. So even the third option gets ruled out. Now we are left with only fourth option and fifth option. This doesn't help us. Fifth option may be the right answer. Who knows? Fifth option may be the right answer. It can be either fourth option or fifth option. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that let's say you're solving this question in the last 
30 seconds of your exam. What can you do? Just take a risk. Mark fourth option and move to the next question. Because we are not making a blind guess here. Are you making a blind guess? No. We very well know that the first three options are not the right answers. Right? In the first two steps itself, we have got to know that first three options are not the right answers. So answer may be fourth option or fifth option. You can mark any one of them and move to the next one. There are 50-50 chances that your answer would be correct. Right? Your chances of going correct is 50%, 50%, half, probability is 1 by 2. Get the point. This only when you are doing it in the last 30 seconds. You, you want to attempt more number of questions. Right? So it, it, it all depends. Sometimes you have to take a chance in the exam as well. Right? So try to, try to follow this uh, idea of eliminating the wrong answer options when you are doing the simplifications. Right? Anyway, let's proceed and complete the calculation here. So what happened here? We have got the second digit as 8. 13 uh, plus 1, 14. 14 plus 3, 17. 17 minus 9 is 8. Now move to the third digit. Right? 6. 6 plus 6, 12. 12 minus 1, 11. There comes a decimal. And because it is 11, we'll take 1 to the next position. Now 1 plus 8, 9. 9 plus 8. You are now moving on the unit space, working on the unit space. So 1 plus 8 is 9. 9 plus 8, 9 plus 8 is 17. 17 minus 5. 17 minus 5 is how much? 12. 2. And 1 gets carried forward. And then look at the 10 space. 1 plus 3, 4. Here we don't have a 10 space. So 4. Here again, we don't have anything to be subtracted. 4. So your answer here is 4. So the correct answer here is 42.182, which is fourth option. Now try to understand the advantage of following this procedure. We don't have to write all these numbers on paper, and hence we save a lot of time. We are doing technically both the methods are same. Whatever we have done here, the same thing we are following there, right? We first add 4, 8, 0. That's what we have done. 4, 8, 0. Then 3, 3, and 9. 4 plus 3, 7, 7 minus 9. Because it was not possible, we have borrowed 1 from 7. Same thing has been done here as well. But what's the advantage? What's the, what's the smartness here? We don't have to write the steps. And so we save a lot of time. So try to follow this. You just need a little practice. And hence, you'll be able to, uh, I mean, henceforward, you'll be able to do this very, very easily. Very easily and comfortably. Right? Let's take just one more question on this. This is very, very important. Out of 10 questions, 15 questions that you get on simplifications, I can say easily 2, 3 are going to be on these kind of simplifications. Right? So avoid, avoid these traditional conventional methods and try to get the answer very smartly.